This is literally, I've spent three hours trying to record this video. This is my last time and it's going up. What's going on everybody? C4 here, welcome back to the channel. And uh, today's video, I'm already gonna lose my voice. I've literally, I, I, it's four o'clock. I started recording this at one. I haven't got it where I want it to be. Uh, yesterday, in my Browns and Eagles grades video, someone asked me a question, C4, who goes first, Carson Wentz or Doug Peterson? I gave a quick answer, but I wanted to extrapolate that a little bit, make uh, an informative decision and an informative opinion in today's video. So what we're doing here today is I'm going to look post-Super Bowl, 2018, 2019, 2020. I'm going to focus on four pillars of this Eagle team, Carson Wentz, Doug Peterson, Jim Schwartz, Howie Roseman. We're going to look at what these four people have done post-Super Bowl and try to figure out what the hell's going wrong, who's to blame, who needs to go first, and everything in between. Now, I'm going to put up like little graphics and stuff because that's that's a way that I don't have to just read off all my facts here. That make the video go a little bit quicker. But as we go through, I'm going to give summaries of each one of these four pillars from 2018, 2019, 2020. And at the end, give an overall summary of where I feel they are currently in the landscape of the Eagles organization and the NFL and what we should do. So let's get right into it, man. 2018. Carson Wentz in 2018. Wow. Coming off the ACL, week three against the Colts. You know, the expectation for Carson Wentz, like we weren't expecting him to play like the MVP yet again. ACL is tough. Not everyone's Adrian Peterson. But he played well, man. 67% completion percentage, 21 touchdowns, 7 picks. Had the elite chemistry with Zach Ertz for not having a running game. You got to remember, Josh Adams, UDFA, drafted free agent, undrafted at Notre Dame, was our leading rusher with like 500 yards. So we didn't have complimentary football, and a lot of the pressure fell on the shoulders of Carson Wentz. And we saw a huge year with Zach Ertz, but we had this back injury in week 15 and that led to another year of Wentz not going to the playoffs Nick Foles came in Nick Foles led us into the playoffs got a very big upset over the Bears and was an Alson Jeffrey drop against the Saints from maybe going on another run now this is where I'm gonna have a look the only tinfoil hat like uh, conspiracy theory is that there's a lot of people right now in the Philadelphia media that suggest that while Howie Roseman seems like a quiet general manager that he might have like Jerry Jones level of influence over the Eagles organization. So I hear that. And then I remember this back injury. Carson Wentz, yeah, he was a little bit banged up in week 15. But when they benched him, I almost feel like it's, I'll say at least equally as likely that he had a legit injury. That it was Howie Roseman saying, hey, Doug, do you think we can win? Do you think we can make the playoffs with Nick Foles? And Doug goes, yeah, probably. It's like, all right, do that. Because we know Nick Foles is going to be a free agent next year. If he can have another solid addition... We're going to be able to recoup a second round comp pick. Someone's going to pay him ridiculous money, which is exactly what happened with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I feel like that might have came into play, which is another. We'll just say that's that's one of the first big glaring. If that's what happened, that's one of the first glaring issues that this is an organization that has done everything possible to kill the confidence of Carson Wentz and fail in Carson Wentz as a franchise quarterback. But ultimately, with that injury, we ended 2018 with Carson Wentz looks pretty damn good. But is he injury prone? Like that was 2018 for Carson Wentz. 2018 for Doug Peterson. Uh, we made the playoffs with Nick Foles. We saw a guy that yet again with injuries and stuff was able to find a way to win. Find a way to get into the playoffs, get some playoff victories. It was good. But the negatives for Doug Peterson, well, the biggest one anyways, was that Frank Wright got poached last second. Josh McDaniel was supposed to be the new head coach of the Colts. He flaked on them. They just said, oh shit, All right, we'll get Frank Wright from the Philadelphia Eagles. And Doug Peterson had to scramble to try to replace this all-star coaching staff that he once had from the Super Bowl winning team. Dee Filippo went off to be the OC for the Vikings, who was our quarterback coach, the QB whisperer for Carson Wentz. And we lost Frank Reich, who was, you know, helped design game plans and helped, helped Doug Peterson call the games. So rather than look outside the building to bring in fresh ideas and try to re-innovate this Eagles offense, Doug Peterson went internally and hired Mike Groh, our wide receivers coach, who at one point when he was in college at Virginia was fired by his dad he was the oc for his dad his dad fired him because he wasn't good enough so we look at we looked at the eagles wide receivers they were not really developing and they just gave that coach that was responsible for a average at best positional group to our offensive coordinator this was very much seen as like a yes man hire from doug peterson and as we found out in 2018 mike Groh was a terrible offensive coordinator so that's kind of how i left 2018 for doug peterson 2018 for jim schwartz Positive and negatives. It's the yin and the yang. We saw a very bad pass defense. We saw the emergence of Jim Schwartz with his guys that he trusts in his scheme, like Jalen Mills and Corey Graham played way too long. We saw great things. We saw the playoff defense. The defense against the Bears in the playoffs, the defense against the Saints in the playoffs was very good. It almost was good enough to make me forget 
about three games in particular. And these are three games that you don't even have to be a hardcore Eagle fan. You'll know what I'm talking about. We lost 48-7 to against the Saints. We lost... We lost a game against the Panthers, which we were up 17-0 in the fourth quarter. And the worst one was that overtime loss against the Tennessee Titans. The, the emergence, the prevalence of Jim Schwartz's sticks defense. Those were three inexcusable, damn near fireable offenses. Off the tail of Jim Schwartz this year having this smug arrogance against him. Because we know Jim Schwartz is a scheme coach. He's a guy that has his scheme. He gets players that fits his scheme versus being, say, a really good defensive coordinator that matches his scheme to the players that he has. This is a Jim Schwartz that had this, like, newfound arrogance that, like, my scheme, I have a Super Bowl-winning defensive scheme. We won the Super Bowl despite your defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gave up, like, record-breaking numbers. And I think if Philadelphia lost that Super Bowl, Jim Schwartz might have been canned right after that because that was an all-time horrific performance. So it, it just felt like everyone knew that it was that bad except Jim Schwartz, who had this smugness of being like, well, you know, my scheme won the Super Bowl, so it must not be that bad. And like that arrogance is still here today with Jim Schwartz. So we ended 2018 with like the beginning of the end. The bad losses were just so bad and inexcusable. But overall, Jim Schwartz still found this way at the end of the season to kind of balance out his defense and look average to above average. And then we finished 2018 with Howie Roseman. In retrospect, the draft was pretty damn good, which is rare because Howie is not a good talent evaluator. Um, I have I have my gripes about the pick. We traded out of the first round so that the Ravens could get Lamar Jackson. It was a fair trade, and I feel like if Harry Roseman was this elite, you know, general manager, we would have finessed the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore wanted to trade up into the first round to get Lamar Jackson, their franchise quarterback, a guy that went on to win the MVP, but they wanted to trade up into the first round to make sure they got him in the first round so they got that fifth-year option for a rookie quarterback, which is paramount for an organization, for a franchise, because you basically get an extra year of a quarterback on a rookie deal, which helps you really go into a win-now mode. So the fact that Philadelphia only got fair value, they, they got hosed in that deal. That was very bad from Harry Roseman. But still, the talent that we did make are all guys that are contributing. Dallas Goddard, Vontae Maddox, Josh Sweat, Matt Pryor, and Jordan Mailata. But outside of that, man, all the other moves were bad. Not a single worthy free agent was signed. We gave Nigel Bradham a contract that now in retrospect was a terrible deal. We traded Torrey Smith, who would have been very, very helpful that year, for a guy in Daryl Ward that they got a DUI and didn't play on the team. And the worst one was the Golden Tate trade. He gave a third-round pick at the trade deadline to the Detroit Lions for Golden Tate, who could not get involved in the offense whatsoever. Again, a big failure for Harry Roseman, and another big failure for Doug Peterson and Mike Groh. So 2018 was like, ugh, we still made the playoffs. It is what it is. 2019. Let's look at Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz went 9-7. and seven. He was the first Philadelphia Eagles quarterback to go for 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. Everyone knows Philadelphia had an injury crisis, and Carson Wentz was able to put up these record-breaking numbers with essentially practice squad players. We had Nelson Aguilar, Greg Ward, J.J. Ortega, Whiteside, Mac Hollins. You know, essentially we were a two tight end offense that had garbage at wide receiver, yet Carson Wentz was finding a way to win. And you also need to remember that Week 2 loss against Atlanta – Drop game-winning touchdown from Nelson Aguilar. Week 3 loss against Detroit. Dropped game-winning touchdown by J.J. Arthago Whiteside. Wentz should have had a better record, and he was constantly failed by the skill position players around him, but he found a way to win. Found a way to make some plays. And ultimately, the season ended with a dirty hit from Jadavion Clowney that knocked him out, and we had to finish off that Seattle game with Josh McCann, a quarterback. I'm not going to fault that. I'm not going to pile on the injury-prone thing because of that Clowney hit, because it was dirty, it was a concussion, and it, it just is what it is. But we end at 2019 with, like, you know what? I'm pretty sure Carson Wentz is a top 10 quarterback. I'm pretty sure. And he stayed healthy. It wasn't like a knee injury, a back injury. He stayed healthy. So that's promising. 2019 for Doug Peterson. Biggest thing for this, there was two things. There was a couple things. We'll put them all up here. But the biggest one was he kept Mike Groh as an offensive coordinator, which was, I just couldn't believe it. Mike Groh was so bad in 2018. It, so bad in 2018. And I, I feel like the Golden Tate debacle was big enough reason to fire Mike Groh, but he brought him back again, which is just like, it, which, which showed to me and told me that Doug Peterson will fall on his sword. He will fall on his guys because he can't make the tough decisions. He's reluctant to make the tough decisions to try to change things up. And we're still seeing those issues here today. And another one was 2019 was the first year that we're starting to be like, oh shit, how important was Frank Reich? Because our scripted plays were so bad. Philadelphia always started the game so terribly. The game plan, the first four or five drives that are supposed to be scripted, what you work on all week in practice, were not working whatsoever versus when they did work flawlessly when Frank Reich was here so you're starting to see like oh my god 
Doug Peterson like overrated? Can Doug Peterson not game plan to save his life? And that's kind of how we felt about Doug Peterson in 2019. Jim Schwartz in 2019. Uh, generally, it was like, all right, good run defense, bad pass defense. It's a passing league, so you can't stop the most important thing. You're focused on things that teams like, you know, unless you're playing Tennessee every week or Baltimore, you got to stop the pass. And we could not do it. Continue failure of that. We had LJ Fort just ended up couldn't see the field. Even though our linebackers were terrible. Cut him. He went to Baltimore. Played very well for them. So Jim Schwartz was starting to be like, oh my God, man. It's just his scheme above all is not cutting it anymore for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's kind of how we, we ended 2019 with Jim Schwartz. And then Howie Roseman in 2019 was like, all right, well, we let Jordan Hicks walk in free agency. That stung. Bad contract handed out to Ronald Darby. Bad contract handed out to Malik Jackson. The draft was inexcusable outside of Miles Sanders. Dillard in the first round. As of right now, today, doesn't look like a first-round pick. J.J. Arthago whiteside over D.K. Metcalf in the second round. Fourth-round pick, Sharif Miller. Fifth-round pick, Clayton Thorson. It was a terrible draft. It was more this year. It encapsulates every negative that we currently have against Howie Rosen, where he cannot evaluate talent in free agency. He cannot evaluate talent in the draft. And it's failing this team because this team is a very old team. The way that your team works, if you're built like the Eagles, where you're an expensive old team, is that you can still maintain these expensive old players because you're you're continually adding young, cheap, affordable rookies that are over time. Like it's it's keeping that balance. And Philadelphia has failed to keep that balance, and that is because Howie Roseman cannot evaluate talent. That's how we ended 2019. Now we're here, 2020. Where's my notes? 2020. Well, we know everything. I'm not going to dwell on this. Don't need as much of a refresher. We're living in it. Carson Wentz is not playing well at all. His mechanics have regressed. His decision-making is terrible. And he looks like a quarterback that has absolutely no confidence within himself, within his offense, and everything in between. Doug Peterson in 2019 refused to sign an offensive coordinator even after Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie said, I will make you fire Mike Groh. Mike Groh is not good enough to be our offensive coordinator. Go out, get a new guy, fresh ideas, and, and transition this offense. Bring a brand new look to this offense. Let's, let's help out Carson Wentz. Doug Peterson went... No, you know what? I'm going to be the OC. We're not even going to have an OC this year. And I'll, I'll bring in Marty Morningweg, who's awful. The last time he was here with Andy Reid. And, and Scangarello, some guy from Denver. And this all encapsulated with the fact that Doug has not developed any of our players. J.J. Sega Whiteside's healthy scratch. Uh, he's not using our team to his strengths, getting Carson Wentz out of the pocket, using Miles Sanders, especially in the second half of games. Everything comes down to this is all Doug Pearson's fault. Because he has not signed an offense coordinator. His reluctancy to try something new, to change things up, is what has me thinking Doug Peterson is Mike McCarthy 2.0. Mike McCarthy that won the Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. And then every year after that was just like, okay, they might make the playoffs, but you'd never really believe them as, as a Super Bowl winning team. And like that is exactly the, the, the company that Doug Peterson is sharing right now with the man that's now the head coach for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Jim Schwartz. The most 2020 thing ever. Jim Schwartz, pass defense is like top five this year, but his run, he can't stop it because teams are just picking on our linebackers. I think there's still no development from some of our young players. Derek Burnett's not taking his game to another level. Our rookies can't see the field. Javon Hargrave's doing nothing. And like, we know, and it's been pretty public, that like Jim Schwartz works hand in hand with Howie Roseman in deciding who we're bringing in on the defensive side of the ball. And that has failed. The evaluation has failed. And I think now we're at a point where it's like, it's clearly... You know, you look at the slot corners. Everyone outside of Darius Slay on the Eagles right now is a slot corner. Like, Jim Schwartz has lost the plot. Jim Schwartz is reluctancy for, like, so many years now. Just trust my scheme. It, it's it's over, man. We need to change things up. Something needs to happen. He's not a bad DC. I still, to this day, cannot recommend who the hell we could sign to be an upgrade over Jim Schwartz. But it's just, it's time for a change. It, it's time to have a new approach to the defense. See if we can re reinvigorate these players and I have a different approach to how we team build on the defensive side of the ball. And then we finish up with Harry Roseman in 2020. Resigned Jalen Mills, Jason Peters, bad contracts. Signed Javon Hargrave, who's done absolutely nothing. We have very limited cap, yet you spend big money on a spot that we already have Fletcher Cox getting top tier money. And Malik Jackson on a bad contract you gave out a year before. You went to Hargrave, who's done absolutely nothing. We uh, wouldn't pay Malcolm Jenkins, which he's playing very well for the Saints. Our draft, obviously Jalen Rager in the first round. With Justin Jefferson, everyone thought we are getting Justin Jefferson. This Howie Roseman, I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm not going to get the obvious pick, even though Justin Jefferson's like breaking records on a weekly basis for the Minnesota Vikings. We got Jalen Rager, who's, you know, looked promising at best. We got Davion Taylor, a linebacker in the third round, who's two years away from being two years away of being a productive NFL linebacker at a desperate position to need. 
and Jalen Hurts in the second round is absolutely inexcusable. Even just from a standpoint of like talent, he's not a second round talent. From how you have to build up the confidence of your starting quarterback, you get a second round quarterback to do that versus getting another skill position player that can help out Carson Wentz, someone on the offensive line that can help out Carson Wentz, uh, someone on the defense that can help keep the defense on the you know, off the field and put the ball in Carson Wentz's hands more. No, you go and get a quarterback just, can, just to continue to shit all over the confidence of Carson Wentz. It's inexcusable. I'll give him the positive of the Darius Slate trade. Howie Roseman made that move, but generally it's been three straight terrible years from Howie Roseman. So we finish up with the summary. The summary of these four pillars. We have Carson Wentz, who over three years since the Super Bowl, he's a quarterback who does have some injury concerns, but has generally looked good with an inadequate support. Philadelphia has kind of set this team up for Carson Wentz having to play hero ball because of just the lack of talent around him. And now it's coming back to bite us because opposing teams are just like, well, he's just going to play hero ball. Let's just blitz him. He's going to hold on the ball too long trying to make a play. He can fumble it. He's turnover prone because he's playing hero ball because that's how Philadelphia's offense is kind of built and designed. They haven't changed. They haven't brought any new ideas, any new schemes. It's predictable. And now we're seeing a quarterback that has struggled with confidence. Ever since Nick Foles won the Super Bowl, then year two got bent, well, not benched, but whatever happened with the back injury, Foles went on two straight playoff runs. Then he was gone. Wentz was the guy. So he had that confidence issues. And since then, Philly has failed to spend and make any meaningful investments in free agency on the offensive side of the ball to help out Carson Wentz. They've failed to properly identify talent in the draft to help out Carson Wentz. And then on top of that, you draft a fucking quarterback in the second round. How is that going to help any way, shape, or form the confidence of Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz has played terribly in 2020, and he has to own, I'd say, 60-70% of that. But the other 30% and everything else on this roster has failed Carson Wentz in every way possible and imaginable. Doug Peterson, somewhere in him. He's a loyal players coach who hasn't looked the same since his all-star coaching staff has been ripped apart since the Super Bowl. His ability to find a way to win late in seasons and, and winning with injury crises is a positive for Carson Wentz, but it's kind of been trumped as of late because his playbook and his calls are anything like the place we saw the Super Bowl year. His calls are very predictable. They're bland. They're, it literally feels like the opposing defenses know exactly what plays are going to run. These second down runs and the Jalen Hurts runs. It's terrible. His scheme is terrible. His play calling is terrible. And Doug's reluctancy to add a new offensive coordinator or new ideas because he's just so stubborn and he's a boomer. He's a, I hate using terms like that, but Doug Peterson is a boomer. He's reluctant to change. He's like that old guy that's just like, well, we still need a radio in the house and a landline. Like That's Doug Peterson in relation to the NFL. It, he's not adapting with the times. He's not innovating. And he's a shell of his former self. And that is something that he absolutely has to own. Jim Swartz is a solid defensive coordinator who generally can stop the run in a league where stopping the pass is paramount. Um, his Swartz favorite guys, his Nate Garys, the Jalen Mills is wearing thin, and his inability to develop these young players who have been in big-time investments for the Philadelphia Eagles, be it Derek Barnett, be it Sidney Jones, be it now obviously we're just seeing a little bit, very small sample size, but Kevon Wallace can't get on the field, Davion Taylor doesn't look prepared, doesn't look ready. I have had, like, I can't tell you one player, young player, that has developed and thrived under Jim Schwartz. So if you're a DC that has a stubborn scheme, a reluctance to change, and you can't develop players, and you're good at stopping the very much second priority for a defensive stopping, what are you, why do you still have a job? What's going on there? And then we finish with Harry Roachman, the 2017 Executive of the Year, has done absolutely nothing since the Super Bowl win outside of probably making the Darius Slay trade. And you, congratulations, you got a player that absolutely was going to pretty much force a trade through anyways. Uh, poor talent evaluation and building one of the oldest and most expensive rosters in the league has the Eagles' future looking bleaker than ever. I mean, this is the, ex the expected results when you give a guy that's a numbers guy full control over personnel and evaluation. That you know, Maybe Chip Kelly was right, sending fucking Howie Roseman to the other end of the building. Just do the contracts and I'll do so everything else. Obviously, we saw how that worked with Chip Kelly. He was an Eagle maniac. But maybe the instincts to make that first move with Howie Roseman was the right one. And I, I think this shtick of Howie Roseman acting like he's the smartest guy in the room, it's, 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 I'm done with it, man. I am absolutely done with it. And the fact that he has done everything possible to fail Carson Wentz as a franchise quarterback, even after giving him that massive contract, is inexcusable. And I, I think, you know, he should just go back to handing the salary cap. If Jeffrey Lurie, to give a summary of everything, what should happen? Jeffrey Lurie, he's the owner. Needs to, needs to show a little Jerry Jones here, a little initiative. If I was him... I would look at how, we'll start with Howie Roseman. I would look at how things were working when we had Joe Douglas. Howie Roseman refused to give Joe Douglas a general manager tag. Joe Douglas went on 
to the Jets, where I really did enjoy his draft. I think he had an outstanding draft, his first draft with the Jets. But, I mean, we still got to wait and see because he's, he's sticking with Adam Gase and all that stuff. But I think that's the that's the dynamic we need. Howie Roseman has to just be the cap guy, and we need to clearly have a general manager in place whose job is the football side of things, the football evaluation, the personnel, and just generally understanding the strengths and weaknesses of Howie Roseman. Uh, defensive side, Jim Swartz, I think it's time for change. I think that he's not a bad DC at all. He probably will get another job somewhere else. But it's just one of those things that's played out. It's played out. And it's, you know, it, we're too predictable. We're not seeing any growth and development. And it's, it's time to give someone else an opportunity to, to vision this defense. I don't think we go as drastic as changing schemes. A lot of people are like, oh, we should get Wade Phillips. I don't think Philly needs to revert back to a 3-4. But we need fresh ideas on the defense side. Well, that's like, that's kind of something that has to go for this whole organization. This is a team that's just riding what worked that Super Bowl year with, with, with a reluctancy and almost a straight up refusal to try and change and reinvent herself and do something different. And it starts with the defense. I think it's time to move on from Jim Schwartz. Doug Peterson. I think that if I'm Jeffrey Lurie, I say we need an OC. We need an exciting offensive coordinator. These are, I'm your boss, Doug Peterson. And I think that maybe, maybe you could say play caller, but I need to see your, 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 uh, your objective for this upcoming offseason is to hire an offensive coordinator to help reinvent your offense. And if you fail to do that, I will find a head coach that will. And that head coach is Joe Brady, the OC from the Carolina Panthers, who was the OC at LSU with obviously everything that happened there, the national champion. And now he's here in Carolina making Teddy Bridgewater play and perform like a fringe top 10 quarterback, even top five statistically. And the offense is innovative and he's finding ways, even without Christian McCaffrey, to, to move the ball with, with a talented, with an offense that's not generally elite. Like, that Panthers offense is a good offense at best. They have talent at wide receiver. Offensive line's meh. Uh, and with a banged up McCaffrey, Mike Davis, and Teddy Bridgewater. Yet, they're an exciting offense. They're an innovative offense. Joe Brady would be my hire. So, I'd, be, I'd straight out tell Doug, if you're not going to hire an OC, I I'm going to go in a different direction. And then we finish up with Carson Wentz. I think with Wentz, I'm very much concerned about this season. I'm very much concerned that these habits that he's kind of gained and developed because of how Philadelphia has really handled him as his franchise quarterback... There's a chance they, they can't come back for it. There's a chance that the injuries and the mental stuff, it, it, it might turn into a scenario where Wentz just needs to change the scenery to, to, be, to have a chance at a second chance in his career, like kind of like a Ryan Tannehill sort of deal. But I think for Carson Wentz, I wouldn't mention one bit for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts in no way, shape, or form is in the same tier of talent of quarterback that Carson Wentz is. But Carson Wentz needs an OC. You need a new OC. You need a quarterback coach that's not Press Taylor. It's not Buddy Buddy. You need to bring back... Someone like Filippo, someone that's going to be an asshole and challenge him. And that's what I would say with Carson Wentz. You need, I, I wouldn't give up on him. I wouldn't bench him, but he needs a new OC, needs a new quarterback coach, needs new ideas, needs to get uh, attacked and practiced differently, needs different, different habits. You need to completely shake up everything that Carson Wentz has got comfortable with here in Philadelphia ever since that Super Bowl coaching staff. So that's kind of where I'm at, man. I, I think if anyone's getting fired... I think generally Jim Schwartz and Howie Roseman would be the two guys that I think should have a should be gone or for Howie Roseman's case job title changed. Philadelphia should just bring in a general manager. But I want to hear what you guys think. That's kind of how I just broke everything down. Do you agree, disagree, anything in between? Let me know in the comment section below. It's been a very long time since I've done a long Eagles rant, but uh, I hope uh, a lot of you guys agree with this. Hope it makes sense for some of you guys out there. And uh, like I said, by all means, let me know in the comment section below how you're feeling, Eagle fans. But that'll do it for me today, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be either uh, a new rebuild or a new episode of the Eagles franchise. So I'll be hitting your sub boxes then. But thank you guys for watching. Thank God this is over. And it's like 15 minutes less than the other three hours that I've spent trying to record this. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.